Hi, this is Todd Goodyear. I am a senior technical consultant at Glidefast Consulting. This video is an overview of the application order management for customer service management. This is a uh, store application. It is licensable. You do have to have subscription for it. It was debuted in San Diego. ServiceNow has been upgrading it or enhancing it in the version since then. It does replace an older plugin that ServiceNow had. That older plugin is deprecated as of uh, the Utah release. The old plugin is called Customer Service Management for Orders. It's less flexible, and ServiceNow created the new application, which is uh, which is much better, much improved upon for this. So if you're starting out, not a big deal. You're going to start out with uh, order management for customer service management anyways. If you're on the old one, and obviously you want to move over. So as we said, it's it's deprecated and ServiceNow doesn't support it or even allow you to turn on that plugin anymore. So what is order management for customer service management? This is an application that allows you to create and manage your product catalogs as well as your product offerings and things associated with product offerings like price lists and characteristics and things like that. Its chief thing is it allows you to capture, track, and fulfill product orders. So you heard the word product a lot in there, but it's not limited to products, right? You can It works just fine for services. You can mix and match between all that stuff. This application is both is configurable, extendable, and data driven. This uh, demo here is going to be done on the Utah release, and we're going to start out with the portal and show what it looks like for a customer to come in and order an item and uh, be able to look up their existing orders. So we have here we're on the customer service portal, and I've logged in as Alex Starr. And uh, when you activate the application, you will see up here that it will add this order header and underneath there is the uh, create new and view orders. So when you turn on the store application here, it's going to put this on both portals, right? So it'll put it on the customer as well as the consumer. The neat thing about it is it is dynamic and is aware of whether you're an account or a consumer and will update this uh, widget ap appropriately. So because we're on the customer side, it knows the account that Alex is associated to and brings in the account or sorry, the contact. If he was uh, associated to different accounts, you would be able to see like here, you can, he's associated to the EMEA one. You can, he can change it here if he wanted to. So if this was on the consumer side, it would detect that. You wouldn't see the account and contact fields. It would just start with the description section. So now we are able to then come in here and add in our product offerings by clicking that add button. And we get a list of all the product offerings out here. So these are all the different product offerings that are active in the system today, but it is actually, I should say it's a subset of all of them that are active. So there are different types of product offerings. There's are simple, there's configurable, and there is bundle. The out of the box, the portal only shows simple. And simple is described as anything where it doesn't need configuration and or is not a bundle so what i mean by that is uh, when i click the, the wireless mouse it is just the wireless mouse something that's configurable would be i click the product and i have to pick a choose a size or a color or things like that and then a bundle is that right I, you know let, let's say i was buying a a laptop with a docking station and uh that's my button and a monitor right? that becomes my bundle so out of the box this doesn't support the bundles or the configuration on the portal side the workspace side of it does support all that out of the box so that does mean that if you want to support uh, those types of things on the portal side you're going to need to do some configuration to uh, to make that happen. So let's walk through a demo here real quick. Let's say Alex here, he wants to subscribe to the Solana meeting, movie streaming subscription. As you saw here, right, we've got the product offering. It comes up with a recurring pricing method, and we have this thing called commitment term that we have to uh, figure out, ah, is this monthly or an annual subscription? So let's say we want to do annual on this. And the pricing method and the commitment term are things that are associated to the product offering in the back end. So when you create a product offering, you have to fill all this stuff out with it. We're not going to cover that kind of stuff in this demo here. And we're just going to click on add here. And you will see that it is allowing us to, or it shows that what we've brought in here. 
So now that we've got it here, we can remove it. We can edit it. Let's say we wanted it. We didn't really mean annual. We meant monthly. We can click on that and it'll bring the dialog box back up here. And we can then change it to monthly real quick and click save. If we wanted other items on here, whether they were services or products, we can click add and we can add a bunch on here as much as we want. Then we've got to fill out our shipping and billing information. It's not mandatory as you can tell, but it'd probably be a good idea to fill out. It doesn't bring over the information from the account automatically, even though we do have a default address on the account. So we're going to fill in this here and and we're going to pick billing address and I got the address wrong. Here we go. Evergreen Terrace. There we go. Okay. So now we've got our address in there. We're going to click submit. We got our order number up there and it is going to load up all the existing orders here in a second. There we go. It is the same as coming in to orders and clicking on view orders. That's this page right here. So we can dismiss this dialog box. So here's all the orders that are associated to the StarTech uh, account and Alex can see them all, right? So Bob's been busy ordering stuff and it looks like Alex as well. We can, here's the order that we just placed. We can actually open that back up and this is what it looks like. So we've got some basic information of when it was created, updated, its current status, when it, we ordered it, and you know our total price that we're paying today. And uh, we can correspond back and forth with the agents on the backside through the comments on here. We have line items. So this is the stuff we ordered. So if we had multiple things, products or services we ordered, they'd all show up here. Order information is you know, the billing and shipping addresses and then pricing adjustments are things that are associated to the order line items. And this would show all pricing adjustments for all line items here. And uh, you can see that how they're associated the product offering. So we'll get into what a pricing adjustment here is in a second. So if we go to the line item, we can then click on the line item and open it up so we can see the offering here's the model that it's associated to there is a monthly uh, recurring price the 45 dollars we ordered the one here are those uh, price adjustments so we have uh, an activation fee of ten dollars and a setup fee of 20 so that's why our total price today is 75 dollars and then it resummarizes the shipping details on here so and this is where the the pricing adjustments come in so if we had to charge extra for something else on here for this we can you can also do it so that it's a discount off. All right, so that concludes this portion here. So we're gonna go into the instance and bring up the workspace and we'll show what it looks like from that side for an agent. So here we are within the configurable workspace and if we were taking calls and we needed to uh, look up an order, we can do that off the order list here so out of the box for if i were you know normally you would take a you'd be filling out a case or even an interaction so on the out of the box it's not configured to show you any orders this is this is something you'd have to configure and add on to the case which is not a big deal and there's also not any actions to say hey i'm filling this out it's really a, an order so let me go create an order from that case so those actions don't exist there you'd have to come in this way so if i wanted to see the existing orders so we can pull up the order that we just looked at that Alex submitted, and uh, we can start walking through some details real quick. So here's all the, the basic information about the order itself. You know, we've got the account and the contact that it's, a, it's for, and we've got the short description. Here's the price list that was used for this. So with price lists, you can set them up with uh, start and end dates if you want. And so that you can say you have a sale and you want it to start on a specific date and time and end on a specific date and time. That's what you do. And when you're using the portal, it will auto detect the look at all the price lists and go, hey, this is the one that I should be using based on uh, start and end dates. And it uses that one automatically and uh, applies it here. If you're inside here with the customer or as an agent and you're filling this out for the customer, you the agent has to pick the price list for it and fill this out. So we'll, we'll show that here in a second. So we've got all the information like we showed here. We go to the line items 
and we can see the item that we ordered and there's those price adjustments that we saw earlier for the uh, one-time charges for setup and activation. If we go into the line item, we can bring that up and it will give us more details. And there we go. So there's our subscription. That's where the price list is really associated. We can see the commitment term of monthly. And again, that commitment term is tied to the offering. So if I had an offering that didn't have a commitment, right? If it was just like buying mice, you wouldn't see the commitment term here. You can see our total prices on this. And now that we've got that all set, we go into details uh, for the order itself. The agent would review everything, make sure it looks good, and then they click confirm order, and this allows it to go on its way. So out of the box, there's no workflows or flows associated to this to, you know, to advance this. So out of the box, this is designed to go to a customer service agent who's going to double check everything, and once all set, they click confirm. You can easily create workflows or flows, whatever your organization's using, to automate and, and skip that step where appropriate. So we're going to go ahead and confirm that order and send it on its merry way. And order has been submitted. So if we had a flow or a workflow in the back end here, we'd go off, start creating those tasks uh, to go ahead and fulfill our service here. So what you won't see is on the order itself, you won't see those tasks. That's because they are associated to the order line items because the different items you're ordering may have different tasks. And if we had the flow, you would go into the order tasks here and you would be able to see tasks, right? We can even create some manual ones on our own if we want to. So, all right, so that's what the existing order looks like. And then we can come in and close that out. So if we had to create a new one from scratch, click on new. And we get to here, it's going to pick account or consumer. We have to fill out what is what. So we're going to pick up there. See consumer went away, so we can pick our accounts. It does filter, or sorry, our contacts. It does filter the contacts based on the account. So we're going to say, hey, Bob's calling us. We're going to fill that out. We have to, uh, at this point, we're going to fill out other information, but maybe we're not ready for that yet. So the minimum is really just an order date. So, but we can't add anything to the order. We need to click save first. And then we get our line items. And we're able to come in here, click on new, and there we go. So now we can pick our product offering. And let's say we want, we're going to use a configurable item this time or an offering. We're going to pick this dishwasher. Okay. And we're going to give it a second. And now it doesn't, it doesn't right away, it doesn't give us the opportunity to figure out, well, you know, how do I know that that's a configurable item? We have to come in and click on the price list and we set that, we click save and it will give us the button up here to say configure. So then we come in and we go, so because your product model is nothing in here. So we got to come in and we go, okay, product model and this dishwasher, we would say, hey, it's, it's a we want the black stainless and we want the standard 24 inch width. So the, when you set up your price lists and stuff, you can set them up so that they have different prices. You can have a base price for your product model. And then from there you have uh, the different prices based on your configuration and it would uh, update accordingly over here. So then you click update configuration and it's now going to select the specific product model that we need here and update all the pricing in here. So if we were to update the order quantity, say two, click through, we give it a moment and see how the one-time price changed here. Still this is unit price, but you know, our total price hasn't changed. We have to click the reprice and it will save it and reprice that for the total price. That comes in handy if you had any price adjustments that were on there based on uh, your order quantity, because maybe you need to have charges for each item, or maybe you need to have one charge for everything, no matter how many you ordered. So anyways, that's why you do the reprice. So, and then for the order, you can then pick out your shipping location if you need to, and it picks the locations that are associated to the account in this case, because we picked an account, and it will pre-populate all that information. 
So we can do this. So if we want to take this specific item here and ship it to that location, we can set that up. We'll hit save. Here's those order characteristics that we talked about earlier that we showed where we picked the uh, color and the size. They'll show up here so you know specifically what you've got instead of just looking directly at the product model, right? Even though all that detail is in the name of it, you can see specifically what you've got coming. All right, so then we close out the line item. We've got the details and give this a name here. All right, there's our dishwasher. We can, we've got our contact for the account. We can do a different contact for the pricing and things like that if we needed to. We can change our shipping location if we want to for the whole order. We can set a billing location on here if we need to. Let's say we want to send this to San Jose instead, and it will fill it all in. So now that we've got it all set, we can then hit confirm order. And it's the same thing, right? If we had it's submitted, so if we had any any flows or workflows on the back end, those things would kick off and uh, start creating the tasks off of the line item. So, all right. So that that uh, that concludes our quick overview of the application order management for customer service management. Thank you for tuning in.